What's up? Um, I'm definitely about to finish the next couple of video, next couple of bottles I got. Um, yeah. So, excuse me. Like I said before, excuse me. My voice is sounding a little nasally. Trying to get over this little cold I got. I got Cameron's Confessions of Fire, his debut album released in 1998 on Entertainment under Epic. This album right here is a very dope album. It's minus the awkward album cover. <laughs> anyway, uh, singles the albums known for are Horse and Carriage featuring Mace, 357, and Feels Good featuring Usher. I would not call this album a classic. Like I said, I would not call this album a classic, but it's definitely a very dope album and shit like that. Like, Late, <coughs> late nineties, East Coast hip hop at its finest. Cameron, Confessions of Fire. Oh shit. Then we have Alon's debut solo album, self titled, released in nineteen seventy seven. Give me one second. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, Alon, um, definitely, actually, yeah, scratch that, the album was actually called Cream City, excuse me, released in 1977 on the Records. For those of you who don't know who Alon is, he is, I don't really know too much about him, but he basically was a guitarist and shit like that, and he had his, like, his own funk group. He has a funk group called Alon and shit, and they originated from Los Angeles. He played guitar with Eric Burner and shit like that. So yeah, I don't know too much about him, but Cream City was released. Um, very dope album and shit like that. I know a lot of people don't know who they are, but if you guys watch the show The Boondocks, um, classic show in my opinion. The episode, The Story of Gangslicious Part 2, when um, Thugnificent and his boys, they found out that Gangslicious was gay, the song Rock and Roll Gangsta, which is on this album, played in the background and shit like that. So yeah, very, um, this is actually a very dope album and shit. It has, it has like that summertime feel to it and shit. Very cool album. Uh, I was definitely surprised when I found this at the uh, record store. Because this album usually goes for like a lot of money most of the times and shit. I mean, sometimes you can find it cheap, but majority of the time you can like, um... It's pretty expensive majority of the times and shit. And it's out of print too, so... Even though they, they re, re, I think they remastered... This album back in 96, um, I believe it's out of print, so if you can find this album, definitely collect it if you like late 70s soul and shit, so, and it's crazy too, because they disbanded before they released a second album and shit like that, and by the late 80s, he quit the music business so he could take care of his son and shit. So, yeah, very, very dope album, Cream City. I might get some raised eyebrows for this one, but before I do, I just want to say that when it comes to these videos, you're going to expect the unexpected and shit. So, <sighs> The Young and the Restless. The original theme and TV soundtrack. I know you guys are going to be like, what the hell kind of vinyls have you got? Okay, so, I have to be honest. Like, when I was little, my grandma used to watch this show. And sometimes I like to watch, like, the older episodes, you know, on YouTube if I'm bored or some shit. And I love the background music and shit. So, that's basically why I got this album. Um... I believe this album was released in 1975, so 
if you love daytime soaps from like the 70s, early 80s, it's definitely like a collector's item and shit. It's out, this is out of print. Yeah, this is one of the reasons why I loved um, the show back in the day, but yeah. Another album you guys are not ready for, but the Space Jam soundtrack released in 1996. You guys should know Space Jam is basically, if you were born in the 90s, this was literally like your favorite movie. Michael Jordan, the Looney Tunes, what more can you ask for? Like, that just screams the 90s right there. Um, this, I was definitely surprised I found this record and shit because... I was like, they dropped this on vinyl and shit. I was like, yo. And this is actually one of the most highest paid, I bought highest paid. One of the most, this is one of the vinyls where I kind of paid a bit out my reach for. Because I got this for about 37 bucks. And usually, when it comes to my limit for vinyls, I usually like to put about, <sighs> excuse me. I usually like to put it like no spend no vinyl no more than thirty one at least, but I cannot let this slip. So yeah, this album had like a lot of singles and shit. So uh, for you, I will with Monica. I believe I can fly with R. Kelly. You guys should know that. Everyone and their moms know that song and shit. That's a classic song. I don't care what no one's what you always say about R. Kelly, you cannot, <laughs> cannot deny his talent, um, Quad City DJ, Space Jam, um, Hit Him Up High with B-Real, Busta Rhymes, Coolio, LL, and Meth Man, Dope Song, Fly Like an Eagle by Seal, you know, his cover of the, um, what's that group called, the Steve Miller Band song and shit like that. And I turn to you by all for one. Like this album right here is so dope. But my favorite song might surprise some of you guys. But the last song, "Bugging" by Bugs Bunny. Every time I hear the song, I just bust out laughing. And believe it or not, Jay Z actually ghost wrote that song. So Space Jam soundtrack, 1996. Very dope, good album and shit. This is actually, I believe this soundtrack is out of print too. So if you can find it, must have. And the last two albums. Oh, you guys are not ready for these ones. This next album is Biz Marquis Going Off. Released in 1988 on Cold Chillin'. Under Reprise, I believe, under Warner Brothers. Well, yeah, under Coach and under Warner Brothers. This album is crazy too because I was literally about to order this album online this week, but I found this album for a dollar in a dollar store when I was leaving. And the crazy thing about it is, I met one of the interns from Coach Chillin when I bought this album, and he was telling me all these stories about Coach Chillin, you know, about Molly Mall, Cool Rap. So, yeah, this album right here, I don't care what nobody says, this is entertaining as hell, like, some of Marley Mall's best production is on this album, like, it definitely has that, like, basement groove, that, you know, dirty mixing and shit like that, very good album and shit, um, Biz Monkey definitely entertaining as, as hell. And yeah, although a lot of people love The Biz Never Sleeps, they love that album, they said that's his best album, I always love, think this is his best one. This one and I Need a Haircut, those are my favorite ones and shit. Um, singles the album's known for are, they had a lot of singles, um, Vapors, Make the Music With Your Mouth, Biz, The Biz Dance, wait, hold up. Give me one second. Yeah, make the music with your mouth and vapor. Those are like the main singles and shit. 
Um, Vapors, you guys should know that by that song. Snoop, Snoop Dogg, um, covered that song for the Dogfather album. Like, very, it's like a feel-good album right here. Very good album. Um, believe it or not, this is actually the OG copy. Believe it or not. And I got this for a dollar because this album goes for sometimes like 30, 40 bucks sometimes and shit. So yeah, expect to review on this album because um, I'm, since I'm still trying to finish up the Big Daddy Kane reviews, I thought this would be like a nice placeholder. So, Biz Marquee going off 1988. Um, this album is actually out of print. So, yeah. And you guys are not ready for this one. Y'all not ready. Scarface's debut solo album, Mr. Scarface is back. Released in 1991 under Rap A Lot, under Priority. Hip Hop Classic. Hip Hop Classic. This album is grimy, sinister, sick, very good album and shit. Like, in my opinion, if, if this album was never released, there would be no Ready to Die, in my opinion. Like, um very much like this album laid the blueprint for a lot of, of your favorite hip hop albums from the 90s, Ready to Die, Me Against the World, Six Feet Deep, um, you know, all that shit, you know, you know what I'm saying, and shit, so, singles I was known for are Mr. Scarface and The Minute to Pray and The Second to Die, like, this album, the production by Crazy Feet and Scarface is just amazing, like, I got this from Amazon for about 17 bucks, and this album usually goes for an arm and leg most of the time, so, yeah, very good album and shit, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say this album is still in print, but I think rap -A -Lot released a chopped and screwed version of this album, I think, and uh, I hate when they do the whole chopped and screwed albums and shit like that. To do the re-releases -re like those that's why I got upset when I got the 8 ball MJG album on top of the world and shit but anyway very good album um this album might be very hard to come by but if you do find it definitely get your hands on this I need to get some more rap a lot albums so I'm definitely eyeing on really these. I'm going out like a soldier sometime next month if the price is right. So, yeah. Scarface, Mr. Scarface is back. And those are all the vitals I have. Stay tuned for more. Peace.